Good morning. So I'm sorry this devotional is a little bit late today. Um, I did struggle to wake up a bit today, but we're here now. And I have to say, according to my calculations, it is um, happy 200th um, devotional. Amazing. Um, we've been um, journeying since March now, since the beginning of lockdown. And I'm so thankful to God for the time he's given us here together. Um, I'm thankful to him for what he's revealed to us. And I'm thankful to him for helping us to um, see ourselves as he sees us, to see our walk with him as free as he wants us to have it, as um, liberated people that now live for Christ. And I think it's so wonderful that we've had this opportunity in the midst of, I guess it follows the theme actually at church, doesn't it? Light in the darkness. In the midst of all this darkness, Jesus has given us this time together to see his light. And 200, that's no small thing. And I just want to thank everyone who's encouraged me during this time as well. It's really lifted me and helped me. And um, I'm just so thankful. I remember God placing this on my heart back in March. And I did think it was for the short term. We didn't think that lockdown or COVID would be around for so long. But I'm actually thankful to God that we have continued to journey together. And in that thankfulness, I read the um, title for today's devotional. And I just thought, oh Lord, you're so good to us. The title for our 200th 200th devotional is Perfect Sacrifice, Complete Forgiveness. I'm reading Colossians 2.13 and it says, And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. You will never be sure that you have God's unmerited favour and grace in your life if you are not sure if God has forgiven you of your sins. Beloved, I want you to know that your sins are forgiven not according to the riches of your good works, but according to the riches of God's grace. All your sins, past, present and future, and that isn't something we say lightly, and we don't say that without awareness that some people find that um, difficult to hear. But it's the truth, because when Christ died for us back 2,000 odd years ago, all of our sins were future sins. He died for all our sins back then. So when we became Christians, his saving work is still at work in our bodies. So he didn't just die for the sins up until we became Christians, then we need to um, work for forgiveness, earn forgiveness. No, we were saved by grace and we continue in grace. We were saved when we didn't deserve it and we continue to be forgiven when we don't deserve it because Jesus has already died. Don't draw a timeline of God's forgiveness of your sins I should have read on. Um, there are some Christians who believe that the forgiveness they received spans only from the day they were born to the day they became Christians. From that point onwards, they think that they need to tread very carefully in case they lose their salvation. This belief is simply unscriptural. Colossians 2.13 states clearly that we have been forgiven of all our sins. Does all mean the same thing to you as it does to me. My Bible says that all our sins have been forgiven by Jesus' one sacrifice on the cross. So that's a good time to pause. All your sins are forgiven because of the one sacrifice. There isn't another sacrifice. There isn't another way to be forgiven. So on that understanding alone we see that all our sins are forgiven the future ones as well because it all hinges on the one sacrifice that has been made we have been forgiven once and for all 
The high priests in the Old Covenant had to offer sacrifices for daily sins, but Jesus, our perfect new high priest, offered the complete perfect sacrifice once for all when he offered him up himself. And we, you can read that in Hebrews 7, 27. It says, once for all, he offered up himself up. He offered up himself, sorry. On the cross, he took upon all the sins that you will commit in your lifetime, all of them. And once for all, paid the price for all your sins. Christ does not need to be crucified again for your future sins. In fact, all your sins were in the future when he died on the cross. So when you receive Jesus into your heart, all your sins were completely forgiven. Now that you know your sin debt has been completely cleared and settled by Jesus on your behalf, don't expect God to deal with you according to your sins. So that's interesting, isn't it? Naturally, we believe that um, God will treat us according to our sins. So if we've messed up, we believe that God will treat us according to that. And when we sin, there is consequences. So, silly example, but if you choose to put your hand in the fire, you will get burnt. Um, you can you can choose your actions, but you can't choose the consequences. Um, no, sorry, you choose your actions. It means that in choosing your actions, you do choose the consequences. So you put you choose to put your hand in fire. You're choosing to get burnt. There's no two ways about it. So when you sin, there are horizontal consequences. If you steal, you'll get arrested. Even if you're a Christian, if you steal you'll get arrested. If you do bad things, you'll get in trouble. There are horizontal consequences. So that there are consequences to sin this way. But between you and God, you are already forgiven because Jesus already paid the price for those sins. He's already been punished for you in your place. So why then, I guess, do Christians um, not go around doing whatever they like? Because we want to honour the sacrifice that Christ made. We want to honour him. If someone died in my place, like we looked at on Sunday, that, that beautiful um, story in the Holocaust where that man took the other man's place and died in his place. That man that was freed spent his whole life telling people about what that other guy did for him, dying in his place. He spent his whole life telling people about him. And that's the same with Jesus. Once we truly realise what Christ has done for us, it empowers us not to sin. And we will spend our whole lives telling people about what Jesus has done for us. Remember, we don't have a religion, we have a relationship. Jesus is a real person who we get to know. And when we understand he died for us, we want our lives to honour him and reflect him. So there are consequences to sin. There are horizontal consequences. But know that before you and God, you're forgiven. You are forgiven. Um, and God, sorry, just one more thing. God is harsh with sin and he doesn't want us to sin because he knows how much sin will destroy your life. Sin is bad for you. Smoking, bad. Um, getting drunk, bad. It's bad for your body. Stealing, bad. You get arrested, it messes up your life. It, you get a record, then you can't get a job and so on and so forth. All those things are bad. God hates sin because sin destroys. Whereas God, he brings life and freedom. Living for Christ is the best option. So God is hard with sin because he knows that sin will destroy you. But God gives you, like we looked at yesterday, he, he works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. 
He works in you. Let the Holy Spirit work with you. If you're struggling in an area, like smoking or drinking or any other addictions or bad habits, let Jesus work in your life. Remind yourself of who you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. And let him work in your life to bring freedom, to bring joy, to lift depression, to take away those chains of addiction. Let Jesus work in your life because he brings life. So when something negative happens, don't imagine that God is coming after you because of what you did in the past. Instead, take God at his word and expect to enjoy the benefits of the heavy price Jesus paid at the cross for you. We sowed nothing good, but through Jesus, we have reaped every good blessing. That, my friend, is called grace. And you honour what he has done for you by thanking him and expecting these blessings to manifest in your life every day. Our thought for today, all is forgiven because of Jesus' sacrifice. And our prayer, Father, your word is true. All the sins that I have and will ever commit have been forgiven by you because of Jesus. He took every one of my sins at the cross and was punished to the full. Therefore, I know that I am righteously and justly forgiven. My forgiveness is based on the sure and perfect sacrifice of Jesus. Thank you for extending such unmerited favour to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love that last bit. Thank you, Lord, for extending such grace to me, such love, even me, all my stuff. So have a great day. Put up some Christmas decorations and um, see you tomorrow. Bye.